This is my 2001 Caterham 7, 1.6 litre. Uh, she's nearly 20 years old now, and uh, she's been in my family all of that time. And we've been to many, many places, including Europe, the Nürburgring, as you can see, and the Stelvio Pass. Let's start her up. You are looking at a Factory 5 Gen 3 1965 Shelby Daytona Coupe. This car was just completed after a two year build and it salutes my all time favorite race driver, Dan Gurney. This car was driven in the championship year by Bob Bondrent and Dan Gurney with this decal on the car for two races. Good morning, this is my uh, US model E24 M6. Works is brand new in San Jose, California. Spent most of its life in California, except for one here. And for over 60 years with a new set of tires, a carburetor, battery, and a fan belt. It started right up and runs great. With the push of a button, Fires right up. Hi, I'm Larry Fuline. I'd like to introduce you to my 1989 Porsche 930 slant nose. For those of you not familiar with the slant nose, uh, it actually was modeled after a race car. Uh, the Porsche came out in uh, late 70s, early 80s with the 935 race cars. They were more aerodynamic, won a lot of races. That's what they were known for. Was they were more designed aerodynamically. Let me show you some differences. Where it's a little different than a standard 930, you'll notice there's no bug eyes. Uh, they've sloped the nose, that's why it's called a slant nose. You'll notice it's also vented. There's a rocker on this side that you'll notice, and then venting here in the back. The interior is pretty standard from a 930, except the steering wheel. If you look at the steering wheel, you'll see that it has a Porsche raised hub, which was unique to the, to the design of the slant noses. I'll start this up for you. Turbo engine, turbo charger, everything is stock, hasn't been modified. Just so you know, they only made 60 coupes in 1989. 89 was the uh, last of the three years they made them. They made them in 87, 88, and 89, and they only made 60 coupes, so this is one of 60. Runs incredibly well. It's a real beast. Thank you so much for watching the video. We'll talk to you soon. Hello. My name is Jean-Claude Demergian. This is my 2001 Aston Martin DB7 Vantage. 
I bought it in 2006 when it was five years old with 3000 miles. It's a six speed, which means it has a clutch pedal and it now has 25,000 miles. When I saw it at the dealers, I thought this has to be my car because as a coincidence, the license plate was the same as the Air Force fighter wing that I was in, Force Tactical Fighter Wing. Thanks. It came from outer space. Hi, I'm Gary Carr. This is my 1961 Chrysler Newport. Design at Chrysler in particular was all about the space age, outer space, and even the Jetsons. I bought this car in 1985. I'm the third owner, and I've owned it longer than my predecessors. It was restored in 1995 to how you see it today. It was the first year for the 361 cubic inch engine and standalone Newport model. In fact, it won the mobile economy run that year at 19 miles per gallon. Thank you very much. I'm Gary Carr, 1961 Chrysler Newport two-door hardtop. My name is Claudio Grossi. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. This is my 1972 original stock Volkswagen SP2. This two-seated sports car was designed by Brazilian designers and produced only in Brazil by Volkswagen of Brazil. 10,206 of this model were made between 1972 and 1976. It's made of seal knot fiberglass. Original wheels and interior featured factory leather seats. All Volkswagen SP2 were equipped with a flat air-cooled engine with 1.7 liters like this one. This is my 1980 Maserati Quattro Porte, top Italian sedan of the 80s, owned by the President of Italy. I owned the car for over 20 years. It came from my good mechanic friend in Hawaii. Uh, he spent uh, two years getting it back in condition, shipped to California, May 18. Uh, drove, took it to many car shows for uh, last year and uh, last couple months it had the rust repaired and was repainted. It's in great shape now, fun to drive, V8 engine, dual overhead cam, 290 horsepower. Uh, not very many of these in good condition anymore. Hi, I'm Alex Puchansky. I'm a member of the Peterson Museum Checkered Flight 200 group. This is my 1959 Oldsmobile 98, the top of the line for that year. This was the year of uh, big fins, but this car has the, the rocket theme. If you notice rockets on the fenders, and you look inside the, the interior and the dashboard is kind of rockety with a three color speedometer. You come around to the back and you'll notice that there's rocket engines sort of on the taillight. I fell in love with this car in 1959 when three of my uncles had them. And in honor of them and tribute to them, I put their initials on the license plate. At a, at a red light, this car is a one car car show. Hello, Peterson cars and coffee fans all over the world. I'm Aaron Geiger from O'Fallon, Illinois. This is my 2017 Mercedes-Benz C63S AMG. Like any AMG, the heart of the car is the motor. This car has a four liter twin turbo V8 that puts out 505 horsepower. I like to think of it as a great modern version of the Hammer because I can drive it to work every day, I can take it on a long trip in comfort, or I can take it to the racetrack uh, and have a great time. This is a 1973 Volvo 1800 ES, uh, made for only two years, 72 and 73. It's a continuation of the P1800, uh, the famous uh, Saint car. So, had this a couple of years, done a fair bit of work, uh, interior, engine work, suspension. Uh, one car to drive. 
10,000 cc four fuel injected with early fuel injection four speed with electric overdrive. Hey there, this is my Porsche 911 restoration project. It started out as a stripped out shell abandoned in the Nevada desert. I've been customizing it and fixing some accident damage, adding parts from kind of the best of all the various Porsche years. So it's really a hot rod, sort of street rod, autocross type car. Let me show you around. It's meant to have a painted dash, kind of like the earlier cars. Even the brake pedal has been customized. This pedal box uses dual master cylinders. The rear suspension's been modified with lower pickups. Chassis's been seam welded for extra strength. This is a 912 engine, will be updated to a 911 soon. Hello, my name is Murray Path. I'm from Royal Oak, Michigan, and I'd like to introduce you to my 1959 Imperial Speedster. This car was built in a two and a half car garage by 10 buddies, every one of them a volunteer, over the course of 10,000 documented man hours and four and a half years. We took a 1959 Imperial four-door sedan and cut it into 46 major pieces. Uh, we shortened the car in five different areas for a total of four feet, three inches. We then sectioned the car three inches and then we narrowed the car eight inches and channeled it as well over the top of a Schwartz G machine chassis, a total of five inches. It features a 6.1 Hemi, has a Dodge Viper independent rear suspension. We'll give you a peek of what was done under the hood here. There is the 6.1 Hemi, complete with its Hemi style valve covers which took over 120 hours alone to fabricate. The intake manifold was turned 180 degrees on the engine so that the throttle body was hidden in a special compartment fed by the cowl vent to make up the air. The front nose cone is a 57 Chevy bumper bullet with a custom CNC machined fin bullet to match the taillights to kind of make that look like a faux intake. This car is a two-seat Speedster, really a nod to the two-seat sports car that Chrysler never built until they came out with the Dodge Viper in 1991. This was a what-if to a gentleman's GT to compete against Corvette and Thunderbird in the late 50s. It features all Imperial design elements. They've just been rearranged and massaged. These dash clusters came out of a 1960 Imperial, just simply because I like the bullet shapes. We'll start the car up for you. It retains all the push button features, including transmission selector. Full leather interior with plaid inserts. The car has driven from New York to Naples, Charlotte to Beverly Hills. It's driven in LA rush hour traffic over the potholed streets of Detroit. I've autocrossed it, I've drag raced it, and it's completed two hot rod power tours. I have currently over 7,000 miles on this car that I've put on it in the past 10 years that it's been on the road. I appreciate the opportunity to show it to you, and I hope you enjoyed it. This is my BMW M Roadster diecast 118 scale model, and I've had her since I was about 12 years old. I've enjoyed her so much in her esteril blue color that I've went and got myself my own adult version. 21 years later, I brought that nostalgia to life. This car 
part is truly analog and what i mean by that is that it is pretty much bare bones it's got the asc which is essentially bmw stability control um, but other than that there is nothing about this car that drives it for you you need to drive this vehicle and paired with its five-speed transmission it is the perfect roadster the perfect driver's car We've got a 1965 C-Code Mustang Coupe. Then restored, it was originally popped red car. 289 board 40 over. The C4 automatic. Bought it in high school off my great uncle. And I had it brought up here to Illinois. And I sold it before I went to college. So everybody, this is my 1974 Nissan Skyline. This is uh, RB26 and uh, NA. Okay, now we look at the interiors. It's all is uh, custom carbon fiber dash. All the gadgets is a uh, stack. All the carbon steering wheel is Falcon. Bucket seats. Also from Watanabe. This is my 1958 Ford Custom 300 sedan, uh, assembled in New Zealand right hand drive, it's a 272 V8, 3 speed manual, original 111,000 miles, I replaced the interior with 57 forward seats and door panels, running good, I drive it regularly, I hope you enjoy this. Beautiful car, I love it. I've owned it for 43 years. My name's Neil and this is my 1989 930 Turbo. I first fell in love with these cars in the late 80s walking out of a Monaco casino. There was one parked on the street and I thought, man, if I'm ever lucky enough. Well, 20 years later, I was lucky enough. I acquired this car. I've owned it for about 13 years now. It is spectacular. It's just a joy to drive. It's beautiful. It's all original except for that nasty sport exhaust. But uh, just over 26,000 miles, it's as new as they get, it's beautiful as they get, it's as perfect mechanically as you can find. If you're interested in this car, I'm ready to part with it. NFDDDS at yahoo.com. Here we have my 1966 Ford Mustang, 347 Stroker, T5 Trans, 8.8 .8 rear end, 355 gears. 20 inch intros. Let's take it inside. And for the interior, 9 inch screen, stick shift, full sound system, AC, LED gauges, and also that TMI trunk. <laughs> 